Our discussion of the subgradient method has shown that it is a pretty universally applicable method of minimizing a function. Uh, as long as you know one single subgradient in each point, you can uh, basically use this method. And we have also seen that it is easy, kind of, so we have good calculus rules to determine such subgradients. For example, we have a rule for the sum of two functions that you just take one subgradient in the one in one sum and one subgradient of, of the other sum and just add them. And we have also have uh, the rule for uh, the composition with linear operators. Um, you take one subgradient and you apply the operator and it's adjoined so that um, and this gives you a subgradient of the composition. We also had the maximum rule and, and so on. So this method is uh, fairly universal, but it has an obvious downside. As we have seen, it is pretty slow. Uh, we, all, we only, in our last uh, or in our final theorem, effectively got a guaranteed convergence rate of 1 over the logarithm of n, essentially if we took this uh, sequence of, of step sizes equal to 1 over n plus 1, for example. And this is kind of a problem. So we have seen that for the absolute value, we could not use um, constant step sizes because we would oscillate around the minimum because the subgradients were changing so rapidly. And this leads us to um, some assumptions we can make um, on our um, objective function uh, to avoid this problem so that we can actually take larger step sizes, constant, and we still obtain convergence. And we want to analyze these this class of functions and the class of functions whose subgradients, or gradients in this case, uh, do not change uh, too rapidly is, is those where the um, gradient is Lipschitz continuous. So we, um, the section will be named Lipschitz gradients. And we are interested in, in a useful inequality which helps us analyze an algorithm um, where, these, where this kind of function applies uh, or, or appears. As we had the subgradient inequality and we used it in the proof of the subgradient method, we want to obtain a similar but stronger um, inequality for this class of functions. Okay, so this will be theorem. Okay. So let C be an open and convex uh, subset of our space H. Okay, and let F be defined on C with values in R. So uh, no plus or minus infinity this time. And this should be a function which is differentiable. with the gradient, and this gradient is defined for um, points in C, and it has values in the, in the whole space. So this is a mapping from C to H, um, being Lipschitz continuous with constant L. And this means that the change in the gradients uh, by the way this is a positive number so L is greater than zero. So the change in the gradients can be bounded by this constant times the change in the arguments. Okay, and uh, this holds for all x and y in C, the domain of definition of f.
Okay, so now we have a statement about the, the gradients and um, the difference of gradients and, this, and, it's, and, and the norms. And we want to obtain a statement about the function values. How do the function values change? Uh, okay, so the statement is then um, we have, so this is the, the conclusion, um, f of y greater or equal than f of x. Um, no, not greater or equal, less or equal than, sorry, f of x plus gradient f of x in a product with y minus x. So this we already know. This is like the first order approximation of the function f at the point x uh, with the, uh, uh, for the value y. So this is a linear approximation uh, using the gradient. Um, convexity would mean that um, the, like if, if you draw an image, if convexity means that if you have x here and y here, that you have uh, this bounded by this first order approximation, but bounded from below. So f of y would be greater or equal than for convexity. For um, for this for this property of, of uh, Lipschitz continuous gradients, we just have to um, add uh, one over no, not one over. So it's l over two. So L half, yeah, uh, this distance. So some quadratic term. So you you would have something like like this as an upper bound. So this is convexity, and this is the new property of uh, Lipschitz gradients. Okay, so. Convexity gives you an upper bound, uh, so it gives you that the, uh, gives you a lower bound, gives you that the first order approximation is a lower bound, and this property gives you this first order approximation plus this quadratic term as an upper bound. Okay, um, this is also for all x and y in C. Okay, uh, let's prove this. Okay. So, well, we just take this expression here and, and see what we get. So f of y minus f of x minus uh, gradient f of x in a product with y minus x. Okay, um, so this expression where we put uh, this, these terms on the left hand side. And we want to, we want to get that this is um, less or equal than this quadratic term here. Okay, so um, we can write this as an integral over the derivative of a certain function, namely the function which takes um, the a variable t and maps it to f of x plus t times y minus x. Okay, why is this the case? Well, if you, so the integral over the derivative will, will, will give you this function uh, at the, for t equals 1, so f of y minus the function for t equals x, so f of x. Okay, so therefore this replaces f of y minus f of x. So what remains is the inner product of gradient f of x and y minus x. Okay, now we know that f is differentiable, so we can uh, explicitly calculate the uh, derivative of this uh, with the help of the chain rule. So this is the integral from 0 to 1, and now you take the inner product of this, uh, of the gradient of f at the very same point, 
in the inner product with the inner, inner derivative, so what you, whatever you multiply with t. And this is y minus x. Okay? On the other hand, you have this term here, which does not depend on t. So the integral uh, from 0 to 1 over this term is exactly this, the, the very same term. So this would be minus gradient f of x in a product with y minus x. So you have the same y minus x on the right hand side. So we just subtract this. Okay. So this in the inner product with y minus x is exactly this derivative and minus gradient f of x, y minus x is this term here. Uh, it doesn't matter that you integrate it from 0 to, to 1. Okay, so now um, our assumption is that we have an inequality where we have something with the norm of the difference of gradients. Here we have a difference of gradients but we have it in an inner product. So we want to estimate this with the uh, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Okay, so we have the integral over the product of norms. So we have the product of, gra of norm of gradient f at the point x plus t y minus x minus gradient f x multiplied with the norm of y minus x, okay, dt. Right, now we can use our assumption. So this is the Lipschitz property. Um, so we have, um, we, can, we can estimate this norm by L times the difference between the arguments. And the difference between argu the arguments is exactly this uh, t y minus x term. And we multiply this with the norm of y minus x. OK. So now we can pull out the t and then we get norm of y minus x times norm of y minus x. So this is, would be norm of y minus x squared. We can pull out the L and we just end up with this t here, which is, by the way, positive because t is between 0 and 1. So you can integrate um, just t dt and multiply the result with L norm of y minus x squared. Okay, and the integral over t dt from 0 to 1 is of course 1 half, and therefore this is 1 half times L times norm of y minus x squared. And this is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this concludes the proof of the first theorem. Now in the first theorem we have not uh, assumed that f is convex, uh, we just have assumed that the, the domain of definition is convex uh, because um, we use this point here, uh, which is a convex combination between x and y. Therefore, we need this uh, domain to be convex, but um, uh, the function itself, we just, uh, we just use the Lipschitz property. Now, um, uh, when we have a function which, has, which is both convex and has this Lipschitz property for the gradient, we would have two inequalities. And it turns out that we can combine these two into one, um, one inequality, which is strong, uh, basically stronger than both. So you can conclude both of both the convexity and the Lipschitz property, and, and this property here, the Lipschitz property of the gradient from this inequality. And we will prove this now. Okay. Theorem. Um, on the other hand, it, uh, it is not sufficient that C now be uh, open and convex because we are using, um, we will be using a point which is not a convex combination of x and y. Therefore, um, let 
f be a function defined on the whole space with values in R, b convex and differentiable, and the same here, with, I think I have to use a new pattern soon, gradient f defined on h with values in h being Lipschitz continuous with constant l greater than zero. Okay, now I don't have to add the definition. Then For all x and y in H, um, well, I, I write it like this. Um, what we want is we want to refine the inequality for convexity um, so that it gives us a sharper, um, a sharper lower bound. So let's see how this looks. So f of x this time will be greater or equal than f of y plus, now we take the first order approximation in y, okay, mm, no, first order approximation in y is x minus y here. plus 1 over 2L, and now we take the gradients here. Okay, without this last term, we get the convexity. And this last term shows us that f of x is not only greater than or equal than this first order approximation, but also you can add uh, the last term to it, which the last term is a norm, so it's non-negative, and this still holds true. So this is an even stronger inequality. And you can also show that the inequality from the last theorem also follows from this. So this is stronger, or at least equally, equally strong, uh, or at least not weaker than, so this inequality alone is at least not weaker than the inequality for, for convexity and the inequality for the Lipschitz gradient. Okay, proof. Let z in h be arbitrary. We will, we will see later how we have to choose this point z so that everything works out. Okay. What do we have? So first of all, we have the, uh, the, the, the previous theorem. And now we want to replace y by z. Uh, it turns out that no gradient of y appears here. So uh, no gradient of z will appear in the, in the result. So this is f of z less or equal than f of x plus gradient f of x uh, z minus x plus L half norm of x minus z. Okay. Right, so this is the, the previous theorem. And the convexity gives us that this inequality holds. Here, the no gradient of f at x appears, so we replace x by z, um, so that we don't end up with more gradients than we need. So, uh, convexity gives us f of z greater or equal than f of y plus gradient f of y inner product z minus y. OK. 
Okay, so this is convexity. We have, we have had the theorem about differentiable convex functions. All right, so we have that this expression is greater or equal than f of z, and f of z is greater or equal than the ne this, this other expression. So we have that this is greater or equal than that. So uh, let's write this down. So combine these two. All right, so uh, also uh, we, we, we see what we want to obtain, so let us just order the terms as, as, uh, as we write it down. So f of x greater or equal than f of y plus, and now let's begin with this, uh, so actually minus uh, L half norm z minus x squared. So z minus x also appears in these inner products. Um, so you can add here we have almost z minus x, we have z minus y. So le let's pretend we have z minus x and, and correct the error later. So then we have gradient of f at y within the inner product with z minus x minus gradient f of x in the inner product with z minus x. Okay, so we have this, 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 and now we, we, we only have to correct this error here. So this is plus gradient f of y, and we have said well, z minus x, so we have to add x minus y, so that we have z minus y in total. Okay, so this is exactly what we need here, by the way. So now we can say, well, this is equal to f of y minus L half z minus x. And we now have this inner product with z minus x. So we can do, we, we can use this binomial formula and uh, subtract 1 over L uh, gradient f of x minus gradient, sorry, gradient f of y minus gradient f of x. Okay, so now we have minus L half norm of z minus x squared plus 2 times L half, so L, um, times 1 over L, so nothing, uh, inner product of z minus x with this difference of the gradients, plus uh, 1 over 2L, uh, the norm of this difference of the gradients. So we have invented this, the, the, the last term, so we have to get rid of it again, so plus 1 over 2L, Okay, gradient f of y minus gradient of f of x squared, okay, plus gradient f of y x minus y. And now uh, we are almost at uh, this inequality here. Now we just have to choose z wisely. So f of x greater or equal than yeah, this here. We just have this annoying inner product here, but we can get uh, this annoying norm here, but whenever we choose z equal to, well, x plus 1 over L gradient f of y minus gradient f of x, then this norm is zero and we get the desired result. So this gives us the inequality uh, we wanted to show for a function which is both convex and has the Lipschitz um, property, or the gradient has the Lipschitz property. And um, 
why is this useful? Well, we, we merge our two inequalities into one. And whenever we, we want to decide which inequality to apply, we just have one. And this gives us the power of both the properties. So therefore, this is useful. So you don't have to think that much which inequality to apply.